Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. This is the 267th episode. Hey, I don't know. Did my cut out, guys? I can't hear him anymore. So he was introing the show. So let me intro it for him. Hello, everyone. This is Fuel for Success. Uh, our daily internet talk show, Mike and I, this is 267, and it is our uh, goal today to bring you practical coaching, motivation, wisdom about business and entrepreneurship. we got some really good questions that have come in, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Mike, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks. Great to I was be just here. doing the intro for you. I was just doing the intro, uh, man. That's all you missed was the intro. I, pr I appreciate that. I had a great intro, too. That's unfortunate. Uh, Y'all missed it. But um, it's good to be here. It's great to see everyone. I'm going to... Uh, we should do the whole show with you on the wrong side to see what people say. To, to see if I can actually do it. I'm going to try. I don't know if I can do it. We can try. That's, uh, that's awesome. Hey, um... So great show we have here. I missed the, uh, he couldn't do it. He couldn't handle it. My man couldn't handle it. It's okay. It's all right. You know. <laughs> hey, listen, there's power in routine. And uh, in business, in life, there's power in routine. And sometimes, you know what? When you, if you struggle all the time by losing your keys, losing your cell phone, find a place for it and keep it there. Just like, there's a place for Matt. It's right over there. That way I always know where he's at on the show. I never lose him. I don't go. We never have to worry where I'm at. Matt? Always. Oh, he's, he's right there. Good. <laughs> Mike, I'm a believer in routine. I actually, I believe that. I really believe that routine and process is, Mike, most people just don't realize how simple life is. They way overcomplicate every part of life. Really, let's be it. When you break down everything, how hard? Eating healthy isn't hard. Money isn't hard. Success isn't hard. You know, relationships aren't hard. <laughs> we make it hard by overcomplicating it and not following principles. Principles to me, Mike, are the keys to success, my friend. Because if we follow the right principles, it's kind of like the law of gravity. No matter what. I don't care if you're in Japan, the law of gravity works. Or if you're in California or Canada, or Florida. So there are there are business laws, there are health laws, there are laws of relationships that work every single time. Anyways, that's just True. my thought of the day, a little motivation, my friends. Good. Um and and you're absolutely right. And uh following principle. You know what? It's it's uh, I would say it's not complicated. Sometimes it can be hard, but it's not complicated, right? Like like managing money in relationships is simple, but it's sometimes work. Um Hey, so today we're going to be talking about business development entrepreneurship, which is one of our favorite topics because we are in a startup and, uh, you know, not our first one, but uh, definitely in, in complete hustle mode. And so this is our heartbeat right now. And uh, so we've got a couple of questions that have come in, a couple of questions we're going to cover today about um, confidence and some other stuff. But uh, I also want to remind everybody, if you're watching live, ask questions over there. Um, if you can't, go ahead and text us, 727-341-5599, or email mike at mathematics.com, or you can tweet us. Tweet us at uh, MJ Hopkins is my handle, M-J-H-O-P-K-I-N-S, or Matt is at mathematics, just as you might expect. Those are our Twitter handles, by all means. Tweet us there. And Twitter's got a new uh, native video option, which is pretty amazing, and you can do at replies and send somebody a 30-second video, which is Powerful. We'll actually talk about maybe some social media stuff towards the end of the show today. But let me start with this. Are you disappointed? Are you disappointed and shocked that I'm not using Twitter video like I should be using it since it's come out? Um, I'm not shocked necessarily. I think it's something that we need to look at and uh, and evaluate the power of it. Of course, I'm always looking at it from a standpoint of okay, how does this help us? Uh, you know, accomplish the the goals that we have. Uh, to me, social media is not fun. It's not entertainment. Right, it's a communication platform. Uh, I'm, you know, yeah, okay. I'm a little disappointed, Matt. Step it up. Yeah, 
Step it up. I was going to say up, you're not son. shocked. You're not disappointed. You're not hurt. Well, you know what? Anyway, so well, let me let me actually jump to that because we've got a question since we're talking about it. Um, okay. Well, I don't have a specific question, it's, but uh, there's a related question. And so, so in today's extremely – actually, we do have a question. In today, today's extremely noisy uh, – uh, you know, um, environment. So we've got all the different social media. If you look at your phone, right, and and just for me, if I open it up, you know, right on my home page, there's all these social media icons. There's Twitter, Vine, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, Meerkat, WhatsApp, Periscope, you know, and just on and on. And all of those are social platforms. It's an extremely noisy environment, right? And so from a business standpoint, let me ask you this. What are some ways to engage an audience in such a noisy environment? What are your thoughts? Mike, I got to tell you right now, I'm just going to tell you that you have to be strategic to capture people's attention today. And you have to understand, I mean, you know, Mike, and you, in fact, we'll, we'll probably go here as far as the power of hashtags, using them pro properly. Yeah. You know what to say in a tweet or a Facebook post, when to post, this, that, and the other. Because obviously people assume that just because you have 5,000 friends that all 5,000 see your posts and that's not even close to being true. How to capture people's attention, Mike? In my opinion, my humble little opinion, there's three ways. Number one, you have to be willing to come across extremely annoying you have to get on people's nerves. In other words, you've got to just, like Grant Cardone says, you got to 10 exit. He says that the, the answer to overcoming obscurity is to make get so much attention that it drives people crazy. So in other words, these are the people that are doing like a video every you know 10 minutes or every 30 minutes or every hour. And they're just like, bam, 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 you know, just always putting out content, content, content. But that's number one, you know, number two, and I'm not saying they're in any certain area. What a lot of people are missing, Mike, on social is the power of uh, personal touch and interaction and connection. The real purpose of social is not just to keep putting out posts. It's to interact with your, your, your audience. It's kind of like building friends. Yeah. You know, if you, the more friends that you have is based on the amount of connections that you make. So it's kind of like, you know, if I walk into a room, everybody may know me because they know oh, there's Matt, but there's no connection because we've never had a conversation. I've never shown interest, you know? So I think, Mike, what we have to get back to in this noisy world is the old school marketing and that's one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the grind way. That's the long way because, you know, we're so used to a quick t tweet, quick text. Yeah mass text, mass email, that we've forgotten how to go one-on-one, -on -one, the power of going one-on-one -on -one with multiple people throughout the day, every day, how that compounds and impacts. We know this. We know this from everything we've tried in marketing and social and you know, email and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, you name it. I mean, I might do a YouTube video today and literally after tweeting it, emailing it and Facebooking it, I, I literally might only get 60 views, right. you know, A, because, you know, if the video is too long, most people won't watch it, B, uh, because most people maybe won't even see it. So that's why you got to send it out multiple times, different times throughout the day. You know, Mike, the, the power of continuously just, you know, it's kind of like the guy here. Like, I can tell you the name of one lawyer <clears throat> in St. Pete. You know why? Every time I turn on the radio, I hear him. Yeah. He's on every TV commercial. Right. I mean, he's everywhere. His slogan is for the people. I know that I know as a resident of St. Petersburg, Florida, that his slogan, Morgan and Morgan, is for the people. Why? Because he's the only lawyer that I've heard. You ready for this? Now, have there been other lawyers? Yes. But guess what? They, they're the ones that might have only done one commercial for 30 days. Dude, if you're going to do something for 30 days, you're out of the game. You got to be willing to go years deep, 
daily, weekly. You got to be so consistent to capture attention. Mike, I actually been reading a book about this because people's attention. Do you know that the first name on a ballot, I believe I read last night that just having the first name on a ballot, you get like, I think it's almost 2% more, more votes just because your name is first on the ballot. I can believe that. So sometimes like, let's be real. I might follow, <clears throat> I don't know, a thousand people on Twitter, but I can assure you I'm not reading a thousand tweets. Right. Cause how many of us grab our iPhone and just start thumbing down, right? I mean, I'll see, cause that's how people are. Same thing with Instagram. They're going so fast. So it's got to be something that they're interested in or that really captures their attention. You know, we could put out a post that, you know, anyways, I could go on and on about this. I want to hear your take on it. Well, I, I think there's there's one thing for, especially for uh, business owners and potential business owners to remember is that is that you need to understand each of the platforms and they're all and they're all different. Uh, and I, I listed off a bunch of them that I have on my phone, for example, that we use. And, and the, uh, <clears throat> you know, Facebook is a very powerful platform, uh, especially when it comes to advertising. If you're willing to spend money on Facebook, it's, it's uh, extremely uh, targeted, extremely focused, and you can narrow your target down. From a, from a pure uh, post standpoint, if you, uh, you know, create posts on Facebook and you think, even if you're like in a group or part of a page or something like that, and say you have, you know, I mean, if you have a thousand uh, people that like a page maybe for your business and you put a post on that page uh, don't even you know there's no way that you're hitting a thousand people there's no way a thousand people are seeing that so first of all it doesn't even go to their newsfeed because Facebook filters it based on what they expect you're uh, going to want to look at based on your past history but then you got to remember just like Matt said they're, they're scrolling through so fast that if it doesn't catch their attention um, you know it's not gonna they're, they're not gonna go there the other thing you know, Twitter is a completely different model. Literally everybody you follow, every tweet they tweet will show up on your feed. But what, what does that create? That creates an extremely high, uh, you know, or actually an extremely low signal to noise ratio. There's a lot of noise without a lot of what you would perceive as value in most people if you follow a couple of hundred people. And so you're just, you know, I don't know, you can just, there's a, you're, you're looking through Twitter and something catches your eye, you might read it. But for the most part, you know, you're skipping right over that. So. So understand that you're only going to, with any social media post, really, unless you somehow achieve virality, and there's there's no way to guarantee that. There's no formula. Don't let anybody sell you a formula on achieving virality in social media because it doesn't exist. If there was, they wouldn't need to sell it because they'd already be billionaires. Um, so unless you achieve some level of virality, just understand that a post on social media is only going to get you know, anywhere from 15 to maybe, if you're lucky, 28-30%. Uh, that's without putting cash behind it. If you put cash behind it, you can probably increase that, uh, but that gets expensive, you know, of course. So, uh, but what I, what I really want to come back to is exactly what you started out with, Matt, and that is that the, the way to get people's attention is, is personal uh, interaction. And, and Twitter is a great example. And I think back to years and years ago, uh, when and I was one of the like first Twitter users ever before anybody knew what Twitter was I was on there and uh, before I think there was even a Facebook um, and I remember being really frustrated with with my Comcast internet service <clears throat> at my house and I like tweeted it and I just used the word Comcast and immediately one of their customer service this is like six years ago one of the customer service representatives like tweeted me back like hey what's what's up what can I help you with and over Twitter back and forth he resolved the issue in like 30 minutes, which was which blew me away and it awakened me to the power of Twitter because in Twitter, you can literally start a conversation with anybody and it's all about the conversation. Twitter to me is a tool for conversation. It's not a tool for broadcasting. And if we think about it in terms of broadcast, if you think about any social media platform as a, as a, as a, as a platform to broadcast, then you're completely missing the boat. You're, you're not understanding the power of it. So, um, and that's true. That's true. And this is what, you know, people that might have a following, right? The danger is, is thinking, well, my followers want to hear me. Yes, but they'd rather hear from you. Believe me, we right. know this. They want to hear us, but they'd rather hear from us. This is why we love the platform of Spreecast. And thank you, Spreecast, 
because of the live chat feature. We literally are interacting with people right now. People are asking questions like Tommy Turner is just asked a question. So now we're able to engage with him and connect right here on social instead of just, you know, talking the whole time. We can literally stop and answer someone's question. Mike, you said it right, man. Like, what's more valuable? Putting out 10 posts or sending an encouraging inbox to 10 people? You know, it depends. It honestly depends on what the content is. Long term, right. if you had the ability to write 10 personal messages, not like, I'm talking like personal. Believe you me, long term, that would, that would just be an unbelievable return on the investment of your time. What a lot of people are missing, Mike, is they're forgetting just how valuable one-on-one. -on -one. It seems so slow in a world of, hey, why don't I just send out a tweet? It'll go to, you know, 9,000 people. No, 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 you're missing it. Like, out of those 9,000 people, the people that you go one-on-one -on -one with, the people that you connect with, those are the ones that are gonna be your customers for life or friends for right. life. We're talking about a business standpoint. You know, at the end of the day, Mike, because of Yelp, social media, Google reviews, people can go anywhere for their business. So the only way, in my opinion, to dominate a market is to be first and best, but also to be best in exceeding expectations and still giving a personal wow experience for the customer. I mean, I could go on and on about yeah. that. Hey, quick, since we got Tommy's question up there, and uh, Carol gave a great answer as well, but your thoughts on this. Tommy says, many people uh, say to have three priorities and throw their wet rest away. If those are God, family, and work, where does health and fitness fit in? That's great easy, question. Tommy, and that's a good question. Three per, three per priority. So I got three priorities for God, three for my family, three for my health, and three for my finances. So, you, you know, obviously it's like this. I mean... There's no way to say you can only have three priorities. There's just no way because that would leave out. I mean, how can you say that health or family or God or money, you know, your career, your business, uh, and then in our world, ministry, you know, which some would say that God, God and ministry are two different things, you know, two different things. A lot of people misunderstand. They equate God and church in the same conversation. Yes and no. That's a whole yes. other show. Yes, and I yes, didn't know it was just about the rhyme. <laughs> uh, that's yes, great. Hey. No, but that's for a whole other show, baby. I think I was a rapper in my former life, Mike. I, it comes out of me sometimes, man. I don't think you were. <laughs> hey, hey, Mel <laughs> uh, Melody asked a great question. Do we have a program that we use for social media ROI? Um, and, and we don't. Uh, and the reason is because... Uh, mostly because we're able to, to manage most of those numbers specifically. Uh, we do track uh, all of our all of our expenditures and that sort of thing. We've got uh, models that we use. We uh, haven't really found a, you know, a third party service that A, was necessary for what we're doing and B, really covered what we want to do. So, so everything that we're doing is basically stuff I've written or created. Um, great question though. And there are some great ones out there. They just don't necessarily fit our needs. So, um, let me, uh, let me ask you this, because we've been talking about social and been talking about tech and how it relates to business and finance, and uh, I'm just going to ask you to prognosticate just a little bit here. Um, uh, what, what do you think is going to be the next big thing, or what's the next big thing when it comes to tech and social uh, and that whole realm? Well, it's amazing to me how Facebook has stayed on the scene for so long, even with Instagram. Snapchat, you know, all these other social Twitter, you know, think about it. Basically, Facebook made MySpace irrelevant, sunk MySpace. But, dude, I, I really MySpace don't know. Um, what's that? MySpace had it coming. What a train wreck that was. <laughs> I, you know, dare you ever say this because as soon as you do, something does. I just don't see anybody sinking Facebook for a while just because I think that. My boy Zuckerberg is a genius, and I think he stays, you know, pretty relevant. Even him buying Instagram, I thought was a smart move. What do I see coming? Hmm. I see. Uh, I still think there's a lot more in the in the world of texting. You know, there was a big 
there was a big uh, wave of, of email marketing. As far as from a business standpoint, I don't think, you ready for this? You ready for this? Not one place of business that I've gone to in the last year has any staff member sent me a personal text, not a marketing text, you know, but a personal text. And I know, you know, at the end of the day, Mike, that, that as soon as somebody creates, which we might have something, but as soon as somebody creates something, you know, obviously that over that only lasts a couple of years, just like emails. I mean, email marketing is, I mean, do it, but don't bank on it, you know, because email marketing really, it's, it's just a small piece now instead of it used to be a massive piece in my opinion. I just, what I see coming next, Mike, personally, is I think there's going to be something extremely relevant for businesses to be able to connect with customers uh, through text and not just yeah. an app or not just an email. That's my thought. What about you? Well, I'm going to put up uh, Katerina's uh, comment here because that's exactly where I was going to go. Um, and if you look at, uh, there's there's actually two things that are really surging right now. And of course, if you know anything about the Periscope slash Meerkat uh, situation and how uh, Meerkat really took over South by Southwest this year. Uh, first of all, the the live streaming from a mobile, which is, you know, something that we actually experimented with a couple of years ago. Uh, and it just, you know, the technology really didn't support it. But with the, you know, every, you know, almost everywhere you go having, having high speed uh, broadband 4G LTE type service uh, makes it a little bit more more realistic. And and both of those are social platforms built on top of Twitter that allow you to do live streaming um, right from your phone, short format, uh, you know, almost uh, it's, it's similar to this similar to uh, to uh, Spreecast, which is, of course, a social media platform that we're using to, to create the show, um, but but more more personal, on a more personal level. Like, for example, uh, I follow Charlie Daniels on Twitter, so, uh, and you should, because he's awesome, and, uh, but he, he like, I see, I see on Meerkat, he's like, oh, I'm, you know, playing this thing in Nashville, so I just, boom, 30 seconds later, I'm watching him play a, a, a live gig at this award ceremony in Nashville. You know, for a minute and a half and then it's over you know walk backstage with him it's and it's extremely powerful extremely cool and it gives you know almost direct access to that individual when they're doing video streaming i think that's one thing to watch and the other thing is just like katarina said snapchat uh whatsapp you know voxer the the one-to-one -one messaging is a huge space that's just beginning to blossom and of course we're in a lot of ways uh leveraging that as well with some of our business uh, plans and and some of the products that that we've developed and are developing because we believe that that's going to be a massive uh, you know influx into the into the tech and social space. So watch Snapchat. It's not just uh, you know kids snapping each other and sexting. That's not Snapchat. Um, it's it's actually a powerful platform. People are just Mike, learning how to monetize it. But my my deal is this, my friend is okay obviously we're in the health and fitness industry right i am shocked i mean when i say shocked i'm shocked that gyms and they're not surviving i'm shocked they've survived as long as they could with the absence of personal touch and the absence of follow-up like it feels like sometimes as long as they get their money the only time you would ever hear from a gym is if maybe you're your payment was declined. That's sad. Right. Like, yeah. there's got to be a way to say, "Hey, Mike, you know, in the month of March, you made it in 15 times this month. Awesome job. How are you enjoying? Is there anything we? Where's that? Where's the? Hey, Mike, I only I saw you only were able to come to the gym twice this month. Is there anything I can help you with at all? Like, that's what makes my health 90. I I know this. There's nothing on planet Earth like my health 90. Nothing. The fact that we can scale human interaction with people in their most struggle, food, the, the discipline to try to work out, 1% of humans have the willpower to exercise and eat healthy on a regular basis. So the fact that gyms, personal trainers, you know, maybe they give out their cell phone number. Maybe they interact with their clients one-on-one. -on -one. I guarantee you they don't. Most of them don't. Right, I could right. ask right now, how many of you had ever 
had a gym. You ready for this? I'll even go deeper. What about churches? Churches are failing today because they're not using technology. Oh, they might have, they, okay, great. You put the songs up on the screen and you feel like you're advanced. Or you might have a website. What good is a website if you don't have the power of personal touch moving in your church or business? What good is all the technology if you're not using it to rip your heart open and say, we care about you. Mike, you know what one thing people want? One thing. I don't care where they go. They want one thing. They want to know that you care. I've studied it. 68% of people that take their business elsewhere did it because they felt an attitude of indifference. The amount of indifference that's among businesses is shocking. I'm shocked. I think it's a level of just pure, I'm from a business person, I'm kind of glad there's so much average out there because yeah. it's so easy to get to the top. <clears throat> I'm like, great, you guys keep being average and stay broke. We're going to the top, my friends, because you're making it easy on us. Because Mike, you know, really stop and think about the amount of people that that don't know their customers and don't reach out to them. And it's not yeah. a, it might follow up is where the game is. And most businesses don't have a clue about follow up. And it's not a postcard from Marriott saying, you know, that's typed out postcard that says, thanks for staying with us. You know, where's the like human phone call? Hey, are you stayed in our hotel this weekend? Just following up to see how it was. And it not, not a script, like really care about it. Like really pay attention. Really listen to what they have to say. Mike, when businesses go to that next level, and you know why they don't? It requires such work to produce high-level customer does. service. It you does. Know, you know what Mike and I feel in My Health 90? You know, we, we started a Facebook page, and it wasn't even part of our, our package. It really wasn't. It was kind of a – really, to be honest, it's a bonus feature. Like the amount of time that we put into that when it's not even – what they're what people are signing up for it's a bonus it's kind of like <laughs> it would be like you know what i'm saying but the amount of time that we put because our minds are like let's try to answer to every single question that comes in or every you know that's just you know what that is that's committing to stepping it up is right. that commitment oh my god is it ever i mean it's like literally we could literally almost sit at our computers eight hours a day and just answer questions in sure. some way, somehow, Mike, uh, advisors would tell us that we're not getting an ROI on that. I have a different feeling. I believe we are. Long term, I Long believe term. we're creating customers for life and customer fanatics, in my opinion. It's true. And uh, plus, we're, uh, you know, scaling the technology. So there's there's opportunity there. Um, hey, let me uh, let me just jump topics just a little bit. And for someone that's thinking about starting a business. Here's, here's an interesting question. How important is confidence to someone who's looking to start a business? My confidence would be the number one trait I would teach. If I, if I had a way of teaching every child right now in the world, you know what the number one trait I would teach them is confidence. If I, was a, if I had a way of, of being involved in business curriculum for business schools, there would be an entire course on confidence. I believe confidence to a business person, to an athlete, to a musician, to whatever, right? You know what I believe? To a salesman, to a manager, I believe confidence is as important as blood is to the human body. If there's no blood in the human body, the human body dies. Or maybe let's say the heart, okay? Confidence, you have confidence in the life of a business person, equal importance to the heart and the body. Like my confidence is the premier trait of success because can you succeed without confidence? Accidentally, yes. One, one in a million, maybe, Real, right. you know. But in my opinion, there has to be a level of confidence. Even if some of that confidence, you ready for this? I'm even gonna go dark here. Even if some of that confidence has a mixture of of borderline arrogance or insecurity and all of that can mix into confidence sure. sometimes as somebody's trying to become confident insecurities and arrogance can also come to the surface while confidence is coming up right i'm okay with it 
I'm okay with it because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take confidence to start a business. Sorry about that. You said a phone call. Obviously. Hey, so is it possible for someone to be too confident? And, and let's take the, the example of starting a business, running a business. Can someone be too confident? Well, too confident to where you don't start to listen to people. You know, too confident, no. But if your confidence gets you to the place, well, I don't know, Mike. I mean, I really don't know because I've studied yeah. the radicals. And the radicals, everybody, well, nobody understood the radicals. Nobody understood Steve Jobs. Nobody understood yeah. Walt Disney. Nobody. Very few. Very few. Yeah. Uh, so too confident depends on like Donald Trump. Is he too confident? Maybe. But guess what, my friends? You ever seen Trump Tower in New York City? Show me your Trump Tower. So right. okay. You know what I'm saying? In other words, is he too confident? Yeah. But you know who's saying he's too confident? No offense, but the UPS driver. Who are you gonna listen to? Ready for this? I mean, no offense. If you drive UPS, I promise you, I'm not knocking you. We need them. I'm just saying, like. I don't, I don't know. I, I would struggle to say someone is too confident, too confident well, because I, of the, what confidence produces such results yeah. that there's, are you ready for this? Confidence equals results. So if you're more confident, that's more results. Too arrogant? Yes. You know, self-conceited? Yes. All that's, yeah, you can be too much of that. I just don't know how you can get too much confidence as me. So, so, and, and we've talked about this in the past that ego can be the uh, enemy of success, especially in business. Um, and I think that, so kind of what you're saying is, is if you're confident, but you don't allow your ego to get in the way of the business decisions, then, then that's a good mix and a good balance. Well, can I say this? And you're a billion percent, right? And Mike and I, that's one of our number one messages. <clears throat> to me, let's leave confidence as its own word. Right. Ego is its own word. Arrogance is its own word. Insecurity is its own word. Like, just because someone is confident doesn't mean they have ego. In fact, a confident person will listen. Yeah. A confident person doesn't have an ego. A confident person says, hey, I want to get better, so I'm willing to take correction. You know, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to say, okay, right. you know what? Like, confidence, confidence is its own spirit. It's its own word. So let's let's let it be and then say, OK, let's deal with ego. Let's deal with insecurity. Let's deal with arrogance. And then Pacey's word over here, uh, cockiness. Cockies, yeah. And is a confident person humble? That's its own word, too, because yeah. it depends. It's all perspective. Like, you know, humility is its own trait. Confidence is its own trait. And each is is displayed like gentleness is displayed at, 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 di at different times as perseverance so one can have a trait but it might not come across gentle right now when you're going at something with confidence you might not come across long suffering or <laughs> patient or even kind you know yeah. to me the trait has to come forward when the situation or demands it you know, right. that's just and, could be and, conf me. and confident doesn't necessarily equate to reckless either. And I think that some people right. would say that if you're too confident, you're going to make bad decisions. You're going to rush to judgment. And, and I'm like, you know, reckless and confident are two separate things. I mean, you can be confident and careful. Right. And be very sure of yourself, very sure that you're going to be able to make the right decision. Be very sure that you can you know, do what's necessary to build the business, but still be careful. Still keep your ego out of it. Still listen to advisors, do all those sort of things. So. Uh, great, uh, great stuff. Whoa, are we already four minutes late? I didn't we realize are. that. Hey, Mike, do we have one last question or are we done for the day, my That's friend? It. That's all I got right now. That's it. Um, love all the interaction over here, Pacey. Thank you for the kind words about My Health 90. And it is true, like true of everyone that's ever signed up. They might have heard about the Facebook page. But it's not even in the guarantee. It's just something we decided to do to say, here, here's an extra feature and bonus that you really didn't pay for. You get what I'm saying? So um, what people are paying for is the training and the accountability and the coaching. And then right. we're using, we added the Facebook 
group page that to me, Mike, you ask any of our My Health 90 people, now it's probably becoming their uh, favorite. I will say this, Tommy, My Health 90, uh, there are some gyms that are going to recognize what we're doing and that are going to tear us up in a good way, that are going to like be crawling to Mike and I saying, please help us. You know, so yeah, I see us in gyms in the future. And, and again, I don't say that cocky. Well, That's a confidence statement. Because I know what we have, you know. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like when you know when you know you have something that you know that you know that the world needs, then you just know. So, anyways, yes. Um, Katarina is asking, uh, how do I get yesterday's fuel for success? Well, yeah, go to fuel for success. I think is the easiest. For TV. Yeah, there you go. Check that out. Um, hey, I love you guys. We'll be back Tuesday. Mike and I are done for the weekend, so you guys enjoy your weekend as well. If you're not a member of My Health 90, do join. Even if you're skinny, join. Because remember, it's not just about weight loss. It's about health. It's about health. And you're going to learn more about health in those 90 days than probably what you've known in all your life. You're going to get daily coaching about how to be a very healthy person. So know that we believe in you, and most importantly, we straight up appreciate every single person that watches live. And those that watch later on the archives, uh, we appreciate you guys as well. So a great big shout out to our live viewers, those that watch later on the archives. You can find us on iTunes, fuelforsuccess.tv, YouTube. And uh, let Mike and I know how we can serve you better. We mean that. Is there something we can do to help you serve you better? If it's within our ability and time, we will do it. Believe me. Right. So if you guys have questions, please feel free to let us know and we'll we'll answer. God bless you guys. Have a blast. Mike, enjoyed hanging out with you, buddy. It's been real. We'll see you all on Tuesday. God bless. Tuesday.